yourself. You muted yourself. Son of a gun. All right. I'm, all right, I'm we got this. All right, we're recording that. <laughs> we're live on Facebook too. I shared it on my wall. Rachel, Ed, Eric, share it on your walls, please, if you can. Just want to get as many people to see this as humanly possible because I know they're going to get a ton of value out of it. Today, we okay. have some very exciting uh, news. I oh, I'm getting some weird feedback. All right. Um, <laughs> today, we have some awesome, exciting yeah. news. Um, our good friend Ed Stroud and his lovely wife Ashley, friends of Eric's, Rachel's, and mine, have brought their mega team that produces over $100 million a year in sales over to Real Brokerage. So, Ed, I am so happy to have you. Welcome to Real. Excited to do more life with you, man. And just welcome to the community. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, took me long enough, right? <laughs> so for those that know Ed, uh, they know that Ed does his homework. He's got a big business. I mean, this isn't just real estate sales. You have an insurance business, right, Ed? You've got yeah. a construction business, a home building business. Um, you also own a couple hundred doors in real estate, as you've said a few times before. So you're a very active real estate investor. So because of the complexity of Ed's organization and real estate sales just being one part of it, he didn't make this decision lightly. And so I think there's gonna be a lot of value you can get out of this uh, webinar today, just hearing from Ed on how he made this decision. Because him and I talked over a year ago, like literally the first week I came to Real, Ed Marco pulled at me and said, hey, you went to Real, I wanna know why. And we started the conversation. And I know Eric has talked to him about 15 times about it as well. And Rachel's had probably 10 conversations with him and his people, but Ed, Walk us through this decision. Obviously, like people value your perspective and how carefully you make decisions. What made you convinced this was the right move for you finally? Well, here's what, I, here's what I've told most people. Most people have asked me, what, what happened, right? What did KW do to you? And my thing is, I, I don't hate KW. Uh, I did not leave because I, I was mad at KW or anything else. I, I truly, as, as some of my good friends have gone over and, and started exploring and finding out what real really is, right? Uh, what I found is the opportunities over there were bigger than what I had at KW. And so then I went back to the OP and basically said, hey, our opportunities at this other company are, are big. What are you gonna do to change that? Because I, I tell everybody, Gary Keller is the one that taught me that this is your world. And if somebody comes along and doesn't fit inside your world, you have to expand your world, right? And I'm telling them, there's there's a bigger opportunity out there. Expand my world so I can stay here. For a year, year and a half, that's the conversation I've had. And here I am, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't think anybody figured out how they could expand it. And what I found is KW is this huge ship, the Titanic, if you will. And to turn that thing with, the industry changing, it can't turn very fast. And uh, so I had to go where I thought the opportunity was biggest for not only me and my wife, but our entire team. And they ended up making the decision and saying, we want to go. And when that happened, it was like, okay, uh, it's time. I, I love something that you said there, Ed, because I respond the same way. Like when people ask, what did Keller Williams do to you or what happened there? It, this has nothing to do with what they did as everything to do with the opportunity real has. Cause we were with Keller Williams yep. from six years, six and a half years. So we feel the exact same way. Keller Williams is awesome. Like we loved it. It was a perfect season for us. They have an, an ama amazing programs for agents, but right. real provides a bigger world. It provides a bigger world for us, a bigger world for our team. So I, I love that example. I feel the exact same way. <laughs> I want to press you just a little bit more and on just like your top two or three specific things that helped you make that decision. Like obviously more opportunity, but which opportunities specifically were the ones that helped you make this decision? Well, this is the other conversations I've had many times. I said, if I do nothing different, if I sell X amount of real estate this year, and then I go to real and I sell X amount of real estate next year, the same exact thing and do nothing different. I have more opportunities in my pocket, whether it be stock, rev share, different things like that, right? If I did nothing different, I am going to walk away with more uh, money, more opportunity, and my agents all get that opportunity, which is even better, right? So that, that's probably the biggest thing. I, if I did nothing different, I'm already ahead from doing what I do. Now, obviously when I came over, I knew that I'm probably gonna do some things different. 
and my agents are going to do some things different. And we already see that after two weeks of being here, uh, we've already seen our agents acting differently, taking, taking advantage of opportunities, and uh, they just really bought in. And man, that's hard to do just within a week or two, I think, but it's, it's happening. Well, I think it's because of uh, you enrolled them in the decision-making process. You didn't tell them, hey, we're going to real. You said, hey, this is an opportunity. And I think that we should look further into this and you guys should poke holes in this business. Um, and, and like, let's just have a conversation here. And I think when you move a company in that direction, that's when people get bought in. I've seen other people move teams to organizations where they make a fast decision and they make it at the executive level and it does not enroll people into that decision at all. Like when they don't feel like they're part of that decision, so they inevitably just leave um, or they're very frustrated and upset about it. Eric, you just unmuted yourself, chime in. I did. Uh... <laughs> And you talked about the changing market and the way in which this industry is shifting and adapting. Uh, you're obviously a student of the game and a player in it also. For people that are watching this, what do they need to know is happening in the industry? What, what should be expected of a brokerage of today? What should be expected uh, in this market as it continues to evolve? Well, you guys have definitely taught me, and I've heard this for the last couple of years, uh, maybe even that guy named Derek Hatch has told me a little bit about this, but uh, it, it, it came down to, do you want to own your brokerage or rent your brokerage? And this is the, the conversation going on out there. And for, for a lot of agents, they just get stuck in their brokerage and they don't, they put their blinders on, they just keep going. But if you're in this industry, you have to widen that view and start looking what's best for your business. Uh, everybody doesn't realize this, I think, in, in the industry, but they each have their own business and they put a flag atop that business, whether it's Keller Williams or real or whatever. Uh, I'm staying, I'm setting in a Hyatt hotel right now, right? Somebody owns this business and they decided to put a Hyatt flag on there. Now, the, the question becomes, which flag is going to do your business the best, the, give them the most opportunities, do them the best overall? And I don't think enough agents ask that question. I think they get stuck with, gosh, I really like this person. So I'm just going to kind of stay here. That's not a good steward of your business. That's not a good steward of what the next five, 10 years looks like. So I just, I just feel like, I feel like real gave us the opportunities that other people could not give us. And after really defining those with our team, and in fact, Mike, you specifically came into my leadership meeting uh, back uh, the end of last year, and that's where it got super great because they got to speak to you about it and not to me. Uh, yeah. And that's the thing that turned the corner for us right there. Nice. I love it. No, I just, I, the way you handled it, I, I think is uh, so respectful and just, oh, just sorry. really impressive. Mm -hmm. Like uh, other team leaders that are watching, if you change brokerages, do it the way Ed did it, not the way you've seen some other people do it, where it's just uh, changing in the middle of the night and you're gone from the office. So, uh, and, and I know that you didn't burn bridges at Keller Williams, which is really important to us. I know it is to you as well. And we did the same thing. Like when I left Keller Williams, I called Ben direct and said, hey, um, this is an opportunity that's come up. I can't say no to this opportunity, but I, I have a ton of love for you. Thank you for everything you've done. If it doesn't work out for some reason, you know, I'll be back. And he was like, hey, you know, I, I totally respect that. Thank you. And I know you did something similar, right? Yeah, the Johns family in Kansas City is Keller Williams in my mind. I mean, they brought Keller Williams 30 some plus years ago. And and I've had that conversation with Steve Johns, which was uh, still still a great friend of mine. And Mama Judy is is the person who actually brought Keller into K, uh, Keller Williams into Kansas City. And I got off of masterminds. I got off some other things where I, I, I told everybody what I was doing and and uh, I got all, I got messages back from Mama Judy and from Steve both that said, class act, you, you did it right. And so, yeah. you know what, that makes me feel good because I, you don't want to, what I was not trying to do was hurt friendships that, you know, we are in the relationship business, no matter if it's with clients or uh, colleagues. And I did not want to hurt those friendships and those relationships. Mm -hmm. They will do me wonders down the road at some point. And, uh, and hopefully I can do the same for them. Yeah. Ed, did you ever consider um, owning a Keller Williams as a different option? We, we did, we did consider it actually. So when we went to Keller, we had the opportunity to, we signed a contract even at, at one point early on to bring Keller Williams into my hometown and actually make it a market center. 
I just didn't have any control over it. And we had other people that had control over it and it just never really went a hundred percent. And uh, obviously I learned a lot in that transaction and I've got other people. I mean, one of the offices we left because we were in four different offices. One of the other offices I left, the guy told me that he was specifically thinking about this one office and he just wants to get me in there and, and be a part of that. Here's what I figured out. It took me a little bit with going to a ownership type office. Uh, you know, they do cash calls sometimes if that office doesn't make enough money. So you have to cash call. So it's truly an investment and it truly is, you know, I have the opportunity to make money, but I also have the opportunity to lose money. And that's, that's just the way it is. There's a lot more risk. I don't have any risk here. The opportunity is I influence people. I help people with their business and probably there's going to be opportunity, but it's, if nothing changes, I don't have any risk. I just need to keep doing what I'm doing. So I like this opportunity better. Yeah. Eric, so I just muted you for a second there because I was going back and forth, but go ahead. Thank you, man. Uh, Ed, you talked about owning your business and not renting your business. And I love that perspective, but I'm really curious, like you don't own real, but you had a chance to own KW. What are the differences there? Because I think you just started alluding to it in terms of, and you've used the word opportunity a lot. And it's such a, such a defining parameter around what real is doing right now, but you're, you're an owner, but you're not, uh, at least in a, in a traditional sort of way, you're never going to have a capital call, but you're winning all the time. Like if somebody isn't familiar with the model, what does that look like? Well, from what I can tell, uh, I, I think I've studied it long enough. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> you know, if, again, if we just go and sell real estate, like that's what we do every day. Uh, that's what we enjoy doing. If we just sell real estate, uh, there's opportunity to uh, buy stock within real. And if we do so un out of our real estate uh, funds, so to speak, they're going to give us free stock on top of that, right? If we go along and we actually cap in, in the real world, uh, just like at KW and other places have caps. But if we cap here, there's a pile of stock that comes over to me for free because I did something good. Uh, if attracting, if, if my best friends in the real estate business and says, tell me more about this real thing. And we sit down and have a business conversation and they say, I want to do this. There's opportunity for stock, right? There's opportunity for rev share, which I know a lot of people think they understand what that is. I always thought I did too. Uh, once I dug into it, I found out a lot more about it. I can tell you this, in the last year at KW, uh, I looked at my profit share because a lot of people said, oh, your profit share is just like rev share. Well, the answer is no, it's nothing like that. <laughs> not, right? not even close. Yeah. <laughs> so what I did is I started running numbers and what I found is I brought about 30 to 40 people over to KW in the last seven, eight years. And, and, and I still am in contact with those people. I try to help where I can. But what I found was last year, my, my, my uh, profit share check was $7,800, right? $7,800. The first two cappers I brought over, that was done. That was my, that was my profit share equal, equal, you know, it was equal to that. Anything above that now, it just continues to go. The other side is, when people are, and I, and I say this to people I'm talking to every day now for the last few weeks, when people are talking about you need to come over, there's a couple different, there's a couple different red flags that come up for me and for them, number one. One of those red flags is, oh, you just want me to come because you're going to make money off me. And unfortunately, in this industry, that's pretty typical, right? We're all used to it. We've seen it. Uh, and And... I hate to say it, KW is no different in a lot of ways. Uh, there's people that are different, but the organizations are not different, I don't think. And so immediately as Eric and Mike and Rachel and, and the people in my world talked about the difference, the difference is we're not letting go of you if you follow us, right? If you follow me over here, I'm going to pour into you. And, and to me, we actually, I was just on a call with Mike and Rachel just 30 minutes ago talking about this. We're not letting go of you. Our job is to help you. 
we we are not asking for money for no service, right? Uh, that would just be crappy. Uh, we're asking for, I want you to follow me. Yeah, we're going to have opportunities to do the rev share off you, but I have a duty back to you to help you. I'm not going to just bring you over and let you go and say, well, your problem now. And I see that day in and day out at a lot of different companies, a lot of different places, whether there's money involved or not. That's the way it goes down typically. Well, I think this, oh, right, Rachel. this is such a great <laughs> and my turn. That's all fired up, <laughs> didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think this is this is such an excellent point because like rev share tends to be those like buzzwords that people are like, oh no, never mind. Ooh, yucky, it's yucky. Mm, I don't want to talk about it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. But let's be totally honest. What is it? Everybody in this industry, if you're bringing people in to mentor them, whether it's on a team or whether you're their mentor agent, Keller Williams always had a program where they had a productivity coach, right? Yep. That productivity coach would take 10% in, in our market exactly. center, we were 10% of your GCI. They would literally take it directly out of the money that you'd be making or that would be going towards your cap. Whereas that real, real is bonusing you, not out of that person's GCI, not out of that person's right. commission, but right. real rewards mentorship so you bring people in and mentor them and real is rewarding you to bring in good quality productive people so that's the huge difference that people you know that i had to separate personally between what the mentorship aspect and profit share and productivity coach you know commissions that keller williams is structured or other brokerages are structured right, and between right. what real does is that real is the one rewarding member mentorship because they want to keep the agent in the center of transactions in this company so that's, that yeah, that, that's, that's a huge difference. And the way you put it, Rachel's perfect. And I'm going to actually use that from now on because I, I, I understand it, but you said it a lot better than I did by far. Somebody's paying for this. Yep. Somebody's going to pay for it. If you think you're coming in the industry for free and training for free, you're wrong. Somebody's paying for it. Uh, maybe it's the government. Heck, who knows? But, uh, <laughs> but okay. somebody's okay. paying for it. And the fact is real is the one that's saying this is our model. And we're going to put the right people in front of you. And, and so far, I think Real has uh, stood behind those words better than about anybody I've seen. I don't know why revenue share has gotten be, become like a dirty word that people don't want to use. Like it, it's almost like it's it's a nasty thing to say or something. But it is actually the glue that creates massive collaboration. When Eric has a vested interest in your business, said when Rachel has a vested interest in your business. Of course, we would help you anyways, but now we feel like we are committed to making sure you're successful come hell or high water. Like now we're true business partners. We're actually officially right. in business. We're not actually just telling you as a mentor what to do or, or being a sounding board. We're, we're actually vested to help you be successful. And that glue yeah, is critical to the success of the growth of a company like real and it's what's lacking from the brick and mortar uh companies right now too and it's that same thing with the training like ed you and i were just talking on a different webinar about this a few minutes ago like at keller williams again nothing bad at keller williams the trainings at keller williams in our office were all by people that are low producing agents because there's no incentive to actually go train and coach people in your local office every minute you're asking me to go do that at keller williams is a minute i'm not selling a house that it's not a fair and equitable trade of my time i might as well just go sell more houses and then make more money for my family but at real they have completely flipped that on their head and if you're an elite agent, meaning you've paid your cap, you've paid your transaction fees, you're a badass high producing agent. Now you've earned the privilege of teaching others within their academy. So learning from badass agents, they've really changed a couple of key things there from the old brick and mortar concept that are, they seem simple, but they're foundationally different and they change the dynamic and the culture significantly as well. Yep. And the funny thing is a lot of these people, and I'll pick on you, I'll pick on Eric and Rachel as well. You guys were already doing this. This, this isn't because of RevShare. You are already pouring into people and they just so chose to follow you where you were headed to because they believed in you and they said, I want to follow these people. So it's it actually is a very natural thing. Yeah. You know, it, it, sh it should be said, we're all uh, former KW agents, but I, I was my own independent agent. I was KW and then I was independent. And so I legit saw the opportunity and we've used that word so much in here i saw the opportunity to join forces and alignment with a company like this uh because of because of the benefit that came from the work i was already doing and when i recognized that it was like oh my gosh 
you mean to tell me that my team can have a better opportunity and that I can have better wins and uh, like we can we can plant these seeds for success. And uh, for, for those that are listening and, and you hear the conversations about revenue share and profit share and all that, and you think it's fake money. In fact, I used to think, oh, that can't actually be real. Uh, we brought over a guy named Brian Crawford uh, in New Mexico. And Brian made a Facebook post last week and he said, I've been at real for three weeks and I've received more in revenue share uh, at real in the last three weeks than I received from profit share the last 12 months. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's, it's a fascinating amount of opportunity and the opportunity isn't in the dollars only the, the dollars are the thing that gets your attention that has you leaning in saying, okay, I got it. But what I've loved is the alignment of like-minded people, Mike and Rach, we were just down in Houston last week with like-minded people at a conference ed and mike and rach and i are all in a mastermind together because we we just say and we're doing life together and we view the world in the same kind of lens and iron is going to sharpen iron and we're going to get better together and ed i know that's one of the reasons why you chose to come over was alignment with the right people right no doubt no doubt i want to be in fact when i got into the business in 2008 uh which was really smart everybody told me i was crazy (laughs) great timing (laughs) <laughs> you know what? We, we did it. We came in and we knocked it out. But my, my little town said, hey, welcome to the real estate industry. That's not how, you know, that's, this is the way we do it, basically, right? This is the way we do it here in our town. Okay. Well, what I found out quickly is I wasn't going to learn how to take it to the next level in our town. So then I went into Kansas City in the same kind of way. This is the way it's done right here. When I went outside the walls, and I got to talk to people all over the U.S. And I started flying and driving and, and going to see how people did it. That's when my business blew up. That's when my systems got strong. That's when all the opportunity for my team came about. And people look at us. We did, you know, 100 million last year. Uh, I think we have eight active agents, really, that that's who's producing. Amazing. That is crazy. And, and, yeah. and, and I live in a market that's 145, 155,000. Of course, I've went outside that market to raise that number up, but uh, that's nuts, right? Yeah. Well, and to Eric's point, you know, somebody who is um, expanding their world and traveling places to learn and blowing up systems and getting, getting bigger in every area, you're creating an environment for your people to be able to expand their worlds as well. Right. No and that's, I, I think with, with real, like, you know, I've talked to a lot of solo agents recently, especially. So not everybody who comes real has to be big teams. Like you don't have to not come because you want to build a big team. There are some agents out there, some solo agents, one actually on this call who I will not name, but you know who you are, my, my dear, um, who, you know, they're used to, they're used to coaching. They're used to um, presenting and training and mentoring and being with people. And they don't, maybe they don't want to start a team, but they want to continue to do that. They want to host classes. They, they have a passion for helping people and building people up in their business. And so in, in a traditional brokerage, you don't have to ask that somebody to pay you for that, right? Or sorry, you do have to ask them to pay you for that. You come to real, you do that. This is all built in. That's part of the partnership, right? Where that person is getting top tier mentorship, expanding their world because of you. And you in turn are expanding your world financially and otherwise by helping those people. So I think that the fact that I had to point out, like it's not just team leaders, but it's single agents that your people on your team, Ed, are going to be able to bring in and become leaders and become mentors of people if they choose to, right? And the other thing I think we do with all this, just playing off you here, Rachel, is we break down the walls of company, right? Uh, I don't care who I help. I don't care if it's Remax or, you know, Berkshire, whoever it is. I don't yeah. care. If, if we can do something to help somebody, whether they come over here, they don't come over here, I don't care. Yeah. All I care is that we're out uh, giving good to the world and uh, life will happen. Life will be good. We, life will be better because of doing those things. Uh, Will some people follow because of that? Sure, they will. Will some people appreciate it and stay where they're at? Sure, they will. We all win. We just all win. And right now for a solo agent in this industry, they they better be looking outside the walls because in all reality, a lot of these solo agents are going away right now because it's tough out there. You better hook up with somebody that can help you. I don't care who it is, but find that person. Sure. When we were in Houston, uh, Tom Ferry shared a slide when he was presenting, and it showed the amount of agents today versus 2012, and it's about double 
what there was active in 2012. And then he showed about the number of homes for sale predicted for this year. It's 4.5 million, which is the exact same as 2012. So we've got more than double the agents and the exact same amount of houses to sell. That's a pretty obvious problem. And that means there's going to be fallout. It's just a matter of if it's going to be you as an agent or if you're going to latch on and lean into a community that's going to help you thrive in a shifting tough market. Because this market is not going to be easy without inventory. We've and seen it before. Yeah. Yep. Um, just a couple of quick questions before we wrap this up. So for those that are watching that are maybe a little closed minded to something like real, what would you say to someone like that? Well, I think if you're closed minded uh, to anything, I think you're going to keep doing what you're doing and getting the same results over and over again versus opening the opportunities. I'll use it one more time because Eric's loving that so much. Uh, <laughs> Oh, you know, it, it's all about opening and broadening your mind to lots of different things. You may not need to make a quick decision. That's okay. But yeah. go look at it. When people, when people close their mind and say, I'm not even going to go talk to that person, automatically, I know you're going to live and die at the brokerage you're at. And that's great uh, if that's okay with you. But typically, people die out before they're ready to die out on, on their business. Open your mind. Go talk to people and grow. That, that to me is the number one thing. Uh, yeah. If you I can't do that, and, you're going to struggle. And, and you got to at least know what you're saying no to, right? Like at least understand the model. Yeah, exactly. the opportunity. Like you're, it, to say no to something you don't even understand is very close minded. And that's something I really respect about you, Ed, is like, you know, very entrenched into Keller Williams for a long time. You were totally open-minded about this opportunity. And then once you really saw what that opportunity looked like at a deep level, you pounced on it and jumped all in on it. So I, I think that that's, that's something that people should be considering to follow and, and do exactly what you do. Well, all my people have already told me down there at Keller Williams, every time I make a phone call to say hi or something, it's like, you ready to come back? And I said, not, <laughs> not quite yet, but let's keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, we'll go ahead and wrap it up there. Unless Eric, do you have anything else you want to add? I know you've been on the road, but I just want to make sure you're good. Uh, Rachel, anything to wrap things up? No, I mean, I think, I think Ed, it's, it's just, I think your heart speaks for itself. I think the, the, the way that you exited your previous company and came into this one, you know, just the, the response that you had, like that says everything to me about who you are, what you're bringing to this culture and the contribution that you're going to have to real as a whole. So I'm, I couldn't be more excited to be aligned with you and Ashley even more than we already are. Well, we appreciate it. We really do. It means a lot. It is all about the people in your life. I promise you that. Yeah, no, we're very excited and we're honored to lock arms with you, Ed. So really excited to see what the future has in store. For people watching this, reach out to Ed if you're curious about Real. Reach out to Rachel or myself or Eric's kind of scary on social media, but you can reach out to Eric as well. <laughs> She's snarky, Eric. <laughs> Might get snarky on you. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, guys. It's good to hang with you. Have a great rest of your day. <laughs> Bye, guys. guys. Bye.